Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 When we come up here, we're not uh, using any magical whale finding equipment to locate these whales. Instead, what we're using visual cues. And so the main thing that we're looking for is that big visual blow or spout that's coming from the whale. That is their exhale. One of the largest misconceptions about whales is that they're blowing a bunch of water out through their blowhole. Uh, oftentimes the birds will take advantage of the whales pushing all the food to the surface. So if there's a whole lot of birds in the area, that's a good indicator that the whales might be doing some feeding. As kind of like the whales, they're taking advantage of all that food here in our waters throughout the season. Now the whales that we're seeing here are humpback whales, uh, but they are not in a pod. Uh, we are seeing two whales who are definitely in an association, and then a couple other whales scattered around. Here they are, right here at our two whales. Look at how amazing they are. These are two really big females in our population, and they are absolutely beautiful. They are right here swimming next to us. This whale right here at the surface is Hancock, and the other one is Pleat. Look at that, uh, the color is fresh in their tail. Oh, they are absolutely stunning today um, in this water. Yep. Right there. So the one a little bit closer to us is a whale named Creek, and the one a little bit further out is Hancock. See it on this whale uh, that's closer to us, Creek. Uh, you might notice some orange on her jaw. I'll talk to you about Wow, look at these humpback whales. They are so incredible. Oh, there's also a whole bunch of bubbles coming up right here at 3 o'clock. Here comes And then our other two are going down. Wow, how incredible. Oh, yeah. Wow. 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 So when the bait is a little bit closer to the surface, uh, we'll see these bubbles start to come up before the whales do. Uh, if the bait is maybe a little bit lower, then the whales might feed a little bit deeper, so you don't always see them come up through the middle. Uh, you see them kind of surface after. Uh, the whales are here in the spring, summer, and fall to do a lot of feeding. So each individual whale will have uh, markings on the underside of their yeah. tail that allow us to tell them all apart. So one example is pleats. Uh, the whale who has the propeller scars, so she has a mostly white tail. And then the other whale is a whale named Hancock, who has a bit darker tail. So we do assign these whales names, but not because we think they're our pets, but just because it's a little bit easier to see them and recognize them and refer to them by name than it would be a really long catalog number. If you think about a large amount of some of the people that you have in your life that you might experience on a day-to-day -day basis, if you had to refer to by an eight to nine digit number, it'd make things a little bit more difficult. So again, this whale, now that we're watching, is a whale named Shuffleboard. This whale was named for the marking on the left-hand side of her tail that looks like a backwards L, the pole that you play shuffleboard with. She was uh, first seen in the year 2008. Look at her tail here from her. She has easily become one of my favorite whales. 
as she is always, always feeding. Hungry, hungry, hungry. And uh, so she, we've been watching her since 2008. And we saw her. We're going to go see some of the other whales in the area. So the other two are making their way back this way. Doesn't really surprise me as there seems to be lots and lots of food. Also why you see so many fishermen. Some of them tuna fishing. As the tuna are feeding on the same thing that the whales are, so we have to try to see them together. Alright, so you might also get to see some bright green patches, and you've probably noticed that with some of the other whales as well that we watched today. Um, in the humpback whale, this is actually their flippers. The flippers of a humpback whale are very special to them as a species. They're about 14 to 16 feet in length. And an adult whale, and each one weighing about 2,000 pounds. Uh, she is one of the, she is the largest humpback whale in our Gulf population at about 54 feet. Wow. At her heaviest, uh, humpback whales might get up to 40 to 50 tons. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to see a great display of bubbles and with those two individuals. Uh, now I'm going to throw some names out there and I'll kind of describe the naming part in a few minutes. Uh, the whale that's on our left hand side who just went down is a whale named Shuffleboard. And uh, the two whales together are Hancock and Cleats. Uh, now I mentioned those uh, those bubbles. Uh, so what they're doing is, as this technique, they're speeding on small schooling fish. Today it looks more based on what we see on our fish finder and on the screen. Uh, it, it might be more mackerel, uh, but they'll they'll feed on small schooling fish such as sand lance, herring, or mackerel. And these schooling fish move very fast, which can be kind of problematic for a hungry humpback whale. And uh, so what they'll do is they'll go down below the surface of the water. And they'll start blowing these bubbles. The bubbles will scare the fish, pushing them and forcing them into a tighter knit ball. <laughs> and so when they're closer together, then they can lunge through the middle of that bubble cloud, um, which is definitely more efficient for them. They aren't having to exert as much energy. And it looks like there might be some bubbles coming up right here at our one o'clock. Wow. One o'clock, Paul. Right off our Oh, yeah. 